Coming up on Valley View News, Seaston's Food Pantry continues to help students and faculty after six years. Plus, gas prices are finally going down after peaking at $5 a gallon. Many students are breathing a sigh of relief while others find other ways to get around. And get to know a little bit more about what it means to be vegan. Hello and welcome to Valley View News. I'm Debbie Tian. And I'm Ricardo Sandoval. Congresswoman and CSUN grad Katie Hill resigned Sunday. The House Ethics Committee launched an investigation into whether Hill had inappropriate relationships with her aides. Hill says private photos of, with, uh, of her with campaign staffers were leaked by her husband and her political opponents. Hill didn't deny the relationship. She apologized after resigning. She says she's pursuing legal action for the invasion of her privacy. California is burning. In the past month alone, Los Angeles had Saddle Ridge, Tick, Palisades, Oak, and Getty fires. The Getty fire erupted just north of Sunset near the 405 freeway. LAUSD and the San Santa Monica Malibu Unified School Districts, UCLA, and Santa Monica College all canceled classes. Authorities shut down Topanga Canyon Boulevard between Mulholland Drive and PCH. Governor Gavin Newsom declared a statewide fire emergency. A San Francisco Bay Area city, Vallejo, declared a water emergency Sunday as crews fought two nearby fires. The city says a blackout was ordered by Pacific Gas and Electric. The blackout means Vallejo won't have power to pump well water. CSUN's food pantry continues to help students and staff who are in need of free food. Valley View News reporter Isa Garcia explains. CSUN's food pantry provides nourishment and basic necessities to students, faculty, and staff in need. People can use the pantry once a week. Crystal Bowen is a student assistant. She says the goal is to prevent hunger on campus. To help minimize the academic impact on students um, who are in need of food. So what we do is we provide a bag of food, supplemental nutrition items. Many students don't know that CSUN has a food pantry to help them. The cost of living is already so expensive, so having one more place where students can go. Student Georgia Rio says that although she has never gone, it's amazing to see how the school is giving free food to people in need. They can go each week. That's an amazing thing that we do, that I think students can really um, feel welcomed there as well as not judged. The pantry is located in Laurel Hall. It has toiletries, canned goods, and dry goods. Depending on availability, the type of produce varies monthly. We do get some really amazing figs. We got some of those recently from the Sustainability Garden. Um, we get oranges from the Orange Grove here. They do an orange pick um, once or twice a semester. Donations are accepted by appointment or during office hours of operation. Reporting from the San Fernando Valley for Valley V News, I'm Issa Garcia. Monks at the largest Cambodian Buddhist temple in Long Beach are being evicted. Kamara Buddha Karama has thousands of supporters who don't want that to happen, but there's a dispute over how to spend $300,000 in donations. As a result, the temple's board wants to evict the monks who live there, but the monks claim that the board is really trying to prevent them from making necessary repairs to the temple. Another horse died last Sunday at the Santa Anita racetrack. Bye Bye Beautiful with a two-year-old filly. She suffered a leg injury during a race and had to be euthanized. It was the second race since September. This is a 36 horse death since last December. Meanwhile, the California Horse Racing Board will be releasing a statement this week about the Santa Anita racetrack. SoCal gas prices finally dropped after increasing by 58.6 cents in the last month. This is the highest amount since July 2015. The average price of gasoline is now $4.10. Some CSUN students use alternative methods to save gas. But I've definitely limited my driving. I try to carpool a lot more with friends if we're like hanging out together. I actually take a train and two buses to get here. And overall I just spent $3, maybe even $2. Governor Gavin Newsom is prompting an investigation as to why gas prices are so high. Multiple people were hurt in a shooting at the Royal Fresh Market in North Hollywood Monday. LAPD said one suspect was taken into custody. They're looking for a second suspect who's possibly armed. Officials say the shooting was tied to an Armenian gang. A rise in homelessness is making a few residents worry as it affects their neighborhood. Valley View News reporter Alfonso Larry says more on the story. Homelessness is growing in parts of Los Angeles. It might have grown in your side of town. Alhambra Avenue in El Sereno has seen homelessness increase either in streets or alleys. Resident Philip Gonzalez says he has seen growth. 
I've been a resident here my whole life pretty much. I would say generally an increase. It's never really gone away completely, so I wouldn't even say there's been any decrease. The growth made some people upset. Santino Nunez lives on Alhambra Avenue. He doesn't like what he sees. It's not boxes behind, you know, abandoned buildings anymore. They're camping on sidewalks. The area has become a hotbed for people in need of housing. Police have made homeless move, but after a period of time, they return. Santino says law enforcement is a temporary solution. Trash cleanup crews that come and um, remove all of the trash and debris left behind from uh, their, their temporary camps. Um, but it'll be a matter of days before all of that is set back up. For residents, it is unsure if the issue will be resolved or continue to grow. Right now, the homeless population is mild in the area. Reporting from El Sereno, this is Alfonso Larry for Valley View News. The Chicago teacher strike is in its third week. The teachers union says the city's latest offer fell short of what the union wanted. Union Vice President Stacey Gates says the city and mayor are hurting the students. We have a mayor that controls every single thing in this city. Housing, schools, public safety, everything. And $38 million is what is separating our schools from beginning on Monday. That is no longer just something that sounds ridiculous. It is a failure. Students have now missed at least eight days of classes. Former Congressman John Conyers died Sunday. He was 90 years old. Detroit police say he died in his home from natural causes. Conyers represented Michigan for more than 50 years. He was the longest serving African American lawmaker in congressional history. He had to resign after allegations of sexual harassment. President Trump was booed during his appearance at Game 5 of the World Series Sunday night. It was a sold out game between the Washington Nationals and Houston Astros. They announced his name and he got a cold Welcome from the crowd. President Trump attended with First Lady Melania Trump, a group of congressional Republicans. They were seen smiling and posing for selfies throughout the game. President Trump left during the eighth inning. President Trump spoke at the International Association of Chief of Police annual conference in Chicago. He criticized the constant crime happening in Chicago. He also criticized police chief, police chief Eddie Johnson. Trump says he wants Johnson's values to change. Trump also talked about sanctuary cities, attacked illegal immigrants, and promoted the border wall. He'll speak at, the fun, at a fundraiser at the Trump International Hotel and, and Chicago Tower. Anna, what's happening in the world of entertainment? There was another world record that was broken, right? That's right, Timothy, and they were some pretty interesting ones, too. Let me tell you more about it. Joker snatched back the top spot at the domestic box office. The movie barely beat Disney's Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. Joker pulled in $18.9 million in ticket sales. It is four week. Maleficent was right behind with $18.5 million. Warner Brothers said Joker made $788 million on the worldwide box office. The film is the highest grossing R-rated film globally. And Kurt Cobain's vintage olive green cardigan just sold for $334,000. The cardigan was sold at a two-day auction last weekend. Cobain wore the sweater for the band's famous MTV Unplugged performance in 1983. The final sales price exceeded the auctioneer's expectations. Organizers claim this is the most expensive sweater ever sold. Kurt Cobain committed suicide in 1994, and hundreds of fans paid tribute to El Príncipe de la Canción José José in El Zócalo in Mexico City last Friday. More than 20 artists made an appearance. Female singer Judy, bands such as La Sonora Santanera and Pandora, sang his songs and remember him as one of the greatest Mexican legends. Jose Jose's daughter and son, Jose Joel and Marisol, also remember their father and share the, their best memories of him. And singer Elton John postponed his Indianapolis concert due to illness. The 72-year-old was supposed to perform on October 26. He still thanked his fans for all their support. He said that he'll make it up to them by eventually giving them the show they deserve. 
The Indianapolis show is postponed until next March. Elton John is on a farewell tour. And comedian Dave Chappelle accepted the Mark Twain Prize for American Humor last Sunday. The, Ameri the award is the highest comedy recognition in America. Chappelle said he loves being a comedian because it's a great way to be heard. He also admitted that comedy saved his life. Entertainers like Jon Stewart, Tiffany Haddish, and John Legend paid tribute to Chappelle. Comedian Eddie Murphy said Chappelle is one of the most intellectual comedian ever. That's all for entertain entertainment news. I'm Ana Ramos. Back to you. Fall season's fun, but it can get pretty hectic during midterms, but at least it's almost over, right? I sure hope so. There's a ton going on on campus this week. Let's go to Sundial's Andrea Esparza for more. Thank you. This week at the Sundial, we're discussing mental health and how it affects student athletes and how social media contributes to cyberbullying. Our new issue is available this Wednesday, and make sure you tune in online for new and updated content. That sums it up here at the Sundial. Thank you, and back to you. More to come on Valley View News. Argentinians are hopeful for the new president. And doctors are suggesting possible weight loss surgery for kids. transfer to Hong Kong for the Emerson Project? I was just about to, but did you see the boss's email? It doesn't look right. It looked fine to me. I don't remember him mentioning the Emerson Project in our last meeting. The bank in Hong Kong closes in 15 minutes. Make the transfer. Yes, sir. Night's on the way. Mr. Jacobs, just transferred the money for the Emerson Project. What Emerson Project? Don't be that guy. Trust, but verify. You made her college years possible, opening that education savings account when she was little, spearheading campus tours, and deciphering financial aid. If you can ace planning for college, you can do it for retirement. Get on track with tips at aceyourretirement.org. As usual, there's a lot going on around the world. Let's hear from Carissa Preciado in our Digital Media Center. Argentina has a new president. Leftist Alberto Fernandez won during the first round of, it, of elections this weekend. Fernandez beat center-right politician Mauricio Macri with more than 80% of the ballots. Macri has been president since 2015. Many say he failed to deliver on his promises, one being more economic growth. Fernandez hopes to take the nation out of its deep recession. Chile's president Sebastián Piñera appears to be listening to his country. A day after a huge protest in the streets of Santiago, Piñera changed his cabinet. The president tweeted, We have all heard and understood the message of Chileans. I have asked all ministers to make their positions available. We're working to form a new team that represents change. The country has been in a state of emergency for nine days now. Bogotá, Colombia elected Claudia López as its first female mayor last weekend. She promised to fight corruption and push for equal rights in Bogotá. López had more than one million votes. She beat runner-up Carlos Galán by 3 percent. López is also the first openly lesbian mayor in Latin America. President Trump announced that ISIS leader Abu Bakar al-Baghdadi was killed by U.S. Special Forces last weekend. He says U.S. forces attacked al-Baghdadi compound in northern Syria. They cornered him. At that point, he blew himself up. It's good news in the ongoing fight against the terrorist threat posed by uh, jihadist groups like ISIS uh, and al-Qaeda. This is uh, a real uh, blow against ISIS and a positive step in the fight against stateless terrorism. But some other Democrats say they're concerned about the operation secrecy. Britain was given more time to decide whether it'll leave the European Union. The EU gave Britain a three-month extension. Meanwhile, Parliament is in deadlock over Brexit. But Prime Minister Boris Johnson is trying to keep this Parliament from stalling. Johnson thinks a quick election will help Parliament vote in favor of proving Brexit. Lebanon could be, could be days away from from economic collapse. 
Central Bank Governor Riyad Salami says Lebanon doesn't have much, much time to waste. It's a matter of days because the cost is uh, heavy on, uh, on the country, but more important, we're losing every day confidence, more and more confidence. And finance and the economy, it's all about confidence. Protesters flooded the streets calling for the resignation of all political leaders. This includes the National Unity Government of Prime Minister Sa Saad Hariri. Salami says Hariri wanted to resign, but changed his mind. Hariri released an ambitious 17-point plan to resolve the issue. But protesters didn't like it. Lebanon has faced its biggest protest in 15 years. Holiday fireworks celebrations in India turned deadly when residents of New Delhi woke up to a massive levels of pollution. The firework celebration left hazardous levels of toxic particles in the air. Thick smog also made commuting difficult. The Supreme Court banned most fireworks for the Diwali festival because of air pollution, but that didn't stop some people from setting them off anyways. Officials say the air quality index was pushed to record levels. Hong Kong is now in a recession after five months of protest. The city's economy was also hit hard by U.S.-China trade war. The amount of tourists visiting the city dropped 50 percent from last year. Officials blame violent protests. Many shops, restaurants, and other tourist, tourist hotspots have been damaged in the last few months. Hong Kong's financial secretary, Paul Chan, says new economic measures will help businesses hurt by the decline in customers. That's all for international news. Now back to you in the studio. Young obese children under the age of 12 can now undergo surgery to increase weight loss. Studies issued by the Academy of Pediatrics show that surgery in teens has longer lasting effects, stating that having surgery early on can reduce health related problems such as diabetes, high blood pressure and liver disease. CSUN students Joshua Guerrero says surgery shouldn't be done for cosmetic purposes. A surgery would then be like ethical if the kid's life were in danger. So if like they have difficulty like breathing or like their insides like just can't like retain the food or anything like that. The new policy states that some pediatricians don't recommend surgery because they believe weight loss is a personal responsibility. CSUN student Cindy Estrada agrees. They should naturally um, lose weight, you know, and put the effort, you know, because if you just put surgery on them, it's just going to show them that things can be easy. Dr. Sarah Armstrong doesn't recommend children who haven't gone through puberty to have surgery, but she says they shouldn't let their age stop them from do doing it anyway. Though some are in disagreement, the Academy says children with a body mass index of 40 or higher are eligible for surgery. Testimony started for a case involving Missouri's last abortion clinic. Planned Parenthood is fighting to keep its St. Louis clinic open. State health officials want to revoke the clinic's license. It cites several failed procedures. City officials say a ruling isn't expected until February. If the license is revoked, Missouri would be the first state without an abortion clinic since 1974. The CDC says vaping illnesses are declining. Experts say recent legislation may have something to do with it. Most patients have reported vaping THC, but health officials still can't identify the problem. Now, the CDC is looking into whether the heating process in e-cigarettes could be involved. New studies found a link between vape marketing and sweet flavors and vaping habits. A study published in the official journal of the American Academy of Pediatrics found flavored e-cigarettes use led to continued vaping. The study says high schoolers who use sweeter flavors vaped more than those who use traditional flavors like menthol or tobacco. Another study from the same journal also found that young people exposed to vaping marketing were likely to try it the following year. It also found that social media had a huge influence. Rain can't slow down Marine Corps marathon runners. Last Sunday, tens of thousands of runners and spectators gathered in the Washington, D.C. area. Everyone who crossed the finish line was completely soaked by the end of the race. This year's winner was 27-year-old Jordan Troff from Maryland. He finished in 2 hours and 27 minutes. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker is in favor of legislation allowing college athletes in the state to make money from endorsements. Governor Pritzker says college athletes deserve the same opportunity as professionals. I'm asking the General Assembly to join us in passing this bill in the veto session, making Illinois the second state in the nation 
to stand up for giving student athletes their rights in a billion dollar industry that they helped build. Any other student who has a job on weekends to make money while they're in school gets to keep what they earn. So why shouldn't student athletes be afforded the same rights? Governor Gavin Newsom signed a similar bill earlier this year and made California the first state to allow college athletes to make money off their names. The bill takes effect in 2023. Tiger Woods, arguably the greatest golfer of all time, captured his 82nd PGA Tour victory on Monday. Tiger Woods won the Zozo Championship in Japan and tied with Sam Snead for most wins of all time. He won on a three-stroke shot. Woods' 82nd victory came 23 years after his first win. The 43-year-old came off his fifth knee in knee surgery in December. After all his injuries, he's still winning. It didn't take long for Woods to win another major tournament. He won the, his fifth master tournament back in April. A Chicago judge ruled the cross-country athletes cannot compete this weekend because their teachers are on strike. As many as 15 parents filed a lawsuit against the Chicago Board of Education. The school board says they are complying with the Illinois State Board of Education by not letting students participate. Some student athletes are very upset about this. We've worked so hard. We've put in all the work the last four years, almost every single day of the year, through rain, snow, you name it, we're out there running. We've put all the work in, and we all have the opportunity to do great things in these upcoming races. Thousands of teachers continue to strike. They're demanding higher pay, smaller class sizes, and better staff support. Coming up on Valley View News, a famous chicken sandwich is coming back. Also, some vegans are preparing for the World Vegan Day. Stay with us. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. So I've come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov kids for tips and information. The Popeye's Chicken Sandwich is making a comeback this Sunday. The highly anticipated chicken sandwich debuted in August. It quickly sold out everywhere in just a few weeks. The sandwich sparked Twitter beef with Chick-fil-A and some other fast food chains. After Popeye's took the sandwich off the menu, many consumers anxiously waited for its return. Popeye's even started a bring your own bun campaign. It encouraged customers to make their own sandwiches due to the popularity. You know, Ricardo, sometimes it's so hard to stay off fast food when it tastes so good, you know? I know tons of fast food restaurants are coming out with plant-based options. Sometimes it's junk food, but I guess it could be healthy, right? I hope so. Valley View's Luis Zuniga has the story on how some vegans want more people to join their lifestyle. Luis? Halloween is just around the corner, and so is World Vegan Day. People at Vegan Exchange LA and North Hollywood are preparing with meals, music, and spooky vibes. The 25th anniversary of World Vegan Day is approaching. It was designed to promote the benefits of a vegan diet. Come check it out, guys. There's still misconceptions about the lifestyle. 
They think that veganism means it's healthy, and it's not necessarily. Vegan Exchange LA CEO Jessica Shea says veganism is not a diet. It means that you don't eat, wear, or uh, pay for animal exploitation in any way, shape, or form. Unlike a vegetarian diet, which allows the consumption of dairy and eggs, a vegan-based diet doesn't let you consume products produced from animals. That includes clothing. Vanessa Sahagan says her love for animals influenced her decision to go vegan. I started uh, getting more animals in my home and having dogs and, and a pig and chickens in my home. I just don't see it logically for me to eat them. Veganism has seen a recent increase in popularity on social media, leading to more vegan-friendly choices at restaurants and schools. This change has made the switch for people like Summer Rain easier. When I first became vegetarian 12 years ago, um, you couldn't go to any store and buy like a vegan burger. It was very, very limited. However, Jessica says a diet change is easy. She says mentally the switch is difficult. It's not the food. It's the mental. It's the peer pressure, it's the family traditions, it's the things that you think you're supposed to be doing. The people in your ear being like, but bacon, you know? I don't eat my dog, why would I eat my pig? It doesn't make any sense to me. Despite the growing popularity of veganism, a 2018 report by Gallup suggests that only 3% of Americans consider themselves vegan. However, this is 1% more than in 2012. That's all I have out here for you guys. Let's go back for social media and tech news with you, Rudy. Thank you, Luis. United Airlines is using the force by making a Star Wars themed airplane. The airline's new design for some jets is part of a promoting the upcoming film, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. United will also offer Star Wars themed kits and give out commemorative pins. And some characters of the film will help in its in-flight safety demonstration videos. The film is set to be released in theaters December 20th. The Pentagon awarded a controversial $10 billion cloud computing contract to Microsoft. Microsoft beating out Amazon in a months-long competition. The contract is worth billions in the upcoming decade. President Donald Trump questioned whether the process was fair. IBM and Oracle also sought the contract, but they both got ruled out. Instagram extended its ban on images showing self-harm. Instagram will cover images, drawings, cartoons, and even memes that show people hurting themselves. This follows their ban on suicide-related images earlier this year. Molly Russell, a 14-year-old British girl, killed herself in 2017 after allegedly seeing suicidal content on Instagram. Molly's father blames a social media platform for her death. Instagram removed more than 800,000 pieces of content between April and June this year. That's all I have for social media and tech news. Demothy, back to you. A home in Pennsylvania turned into a monster, a cookie monster. Homeowner Lisa Bull transformed her front door into the bright blue beast. She painted the vines around her home blue, shaped the entrance into a mouth, used plastic foam for the eyes, and of course, she added a tasty chocolate chip cookie. Bull says a lot of people stopped for pictures. She was inspired by the 50th anniversary of Sesame Street. That's all for us at Valley View News. Thank you for watching. I'm Demothy Tian. And I'm Ricardo Sandoval. For news any time of the day, go to our website, sundial.csun.edu. See you next week.